In this video, we're going to start creating the text block for all of the character expansion packs for Warhammer Quest. So let's get into this. Welcome to Solitary RPG. In this video, we're going to go over the first step of creating our text block for the Warhammer Quest character expansion booklets that were available back in the 90s and what we need to do is we need to take all the loose pieces of paper that we had and glue them all together and that's what I want to cover in this video so it's going to be a mixture of photos of me explaining the steps and then I'm also going to have a, a video clip when I actually glued everything together so you can actually see the process on how I glue these together so let's get started. In this photo, you can see I'm getting my document ready to cut. We're only going to make one cut along the spine of the book. And then after we get it all glued together and we get our binding ropes in place, then we'll go through and make the rest of the cuts from along the top, the bottom, and the front edge. You're also going to notice I have blank pages. I always go with four blank pages. Put those in the back of the document. They're actually going to come into play later in this process. But you want to have them as just part of your document. So they need to be the same size. I'm using 8.5 by 11 size paper. So I just got four sheets of paper. And I'll put those in the back of the document. Next, we're going to draw our cut line. And this is important for me because of the style of paper cutter that I have. I have to have some sort of a, a reference line to look at when I get it all set up. But my cut line is going to be about an eighth of an inch outside of the image of the document. And this space between the image and the very edge is going to be where we're going to make cuts in the document in the sec next step to put in our binding ropes. So I just give myself a little bit of room to make those cuts to insert my binding rope. One of the reasons I really like these fabric rulers is they're see-through and they're full of different measurement lines so that I can get a really good line with the document and everything just comes out better. I really like using them and I would recommend them to anybody that's gonna get into bookbinding. And here you can see I drew my line and how far it is from the document. It's about an eighth of an inch. Uh, but that's, I just make a reference line. That's what that's for. There's about an eighth to a quarter inch gap between the gate and the blade. And the, this is why the cut line is helpful for me with this particular paper cutter. Because once I secure it in place, I need to be able to drop the paper cutter. I want to hit it on the line. And it can be very complicated if you don't have a cut line in place. And then here you can see the document after I cut it. And we're only cutting the back along the spine because we're going to get our binding ropes in place. And then once all that's done, we will cut along the edges of the document. Also, as I talked about in the first video, dealing with scanned copies, you're kind of depending on the person that scanned them to kind of size everything up right. But here you can see how the documents didn't all line up the same. Again, we're using scanned copies off the internet. Yes, I could have taken more time to resize them when printing them, but then you're printing up a bunch of documents to try to make sure they work right. There's enough space for me on these documents to when I put in my cut lines, everything will be good. And now what we're going to do is we're going to mark up the cover page where we want to put our cut lines. So. I start by going a half inch in from the top and the bottom, and then I break that in half, and then I break those halves into halves, and, and so on. And these are just going to be reference lines, and they will not be seen once the document is all put together because I'm just using that white space between the print and the very edge of the spine. But these are where we're going to cut the document, and we're going to put in our binding rope. Now I got the document all set up in my book vise. As I said in my previous videos, I'm kind of a hack. I am not a professional bookbinder. I do not own a bookbinding vice. So this is how I have modified some pieces of scrap wood with some clamps to create a, a book vice. What I do is I take the two pages of the blank documents and I put them in the front. 
I mark where I want to cut that document. So these are my cut lines because once this is all glued together, I will not be able to see those reference lines. And these pages are really just here to help protect my document from any glue that may roll over. And we're also going to get pretty rough with this document when we start cutting it. So it's just to protect the actual text block. That's why you want two pages in case you get a little too rough and you got to peel one of them off. You still have a backup one. And it also provides a little extra cushion between your actual document and um, the, the scrap pages that you're using to protect it. But what I want to do now is I want to cut into actual video and I'm going to show you how I get the document set up in my vise because this is kind of a makeshift vise and then we're going to glue the pages together so you can actually see the process of me gluing them together and then we'll come back to the final photo of of this document. What we're going to do now is I'm actually going to do a video recording of getting everything set up in my book vise, gluing the pages together and getting everything ready for uh, the next step in the process, which will be cutting the document and putting in the binding rope. So let's do a quick look at what I have. So these pieces are just press wood. They were part of a wood like shelf that I had for displaying miniatures that I never used. But when I started getting into book binding, they work great for book binding. So I took the shelves and that's what these are from. You could just get any kind of scrap wood um, that you have laying around. Just make sure it's all kind of sized the same and it's the same thickness. I actually use these for some of my measurements as well. We'll talk about that when we actually do it. I have two inexpensive kind of spring clamps that I got from. The hardware store these are good to get everything set up but then when you need to really crank things down i just have some metal crank clamps husky so i got these i believe from lowe's i think that's the husky brand anyways get a couple of those these are cheap this all the stuff is inexpensive and very you know obtainable for anybody that wants to start bookbinding as a as a hobby this is, guess what, Elmer's glue. Nothing fancy, nothing special. Um, I actually buy a big jug of Elmer's glue and I just keep refilling this bottle uh, because it's actually cheaper to have the big gallon jug of it and refilling a bottle than going out and buying a bunch of the little bottles because this way I can always make sure I'm full to the top, which means I got access to the glue quicker. This is Reynolds Kitchen Cookie Baking Sheets. And we're gonna use this to wrap around the spine of the book after we glue it because these are um, designed for cookies not to stick to the paper or stick to your pans. And Elmer's glue doesn't stick to it, so it peels right off the Elmer's glue. We have a damp towel. So whenever you start messing around with Elmer's glue, Unless you're going to use paint brushes and things like that, uh, it's going to get on your hands. And then if you start touching your document, you get it all over your document. So have some wet towels uh, accessible to you to wipe off any of the glue off your hands while you're going through the process. And then we have our documents. So initially, um, when I created everything, I did my document taking photos and that's when I realized it wasn't going to work. So this is the other document that I'll be creating. So this is, these are the prints from Little Monk. I've already put my cut line in. What we're going to do is we're going to glue this together um, for this video. And then what I'll end up doing is cutting this down to size later. Um, and then re-gluing it and everything like that. For right now, I'm just going to use this as an example because I still need to add some of the different characters to the back of this. I have not printed them out. But I'm going to treat it just like anything else. But I've already put my cut line in for future Mike to use. And I've got my pieces of scrap paper. But I haven't marked this because I don't need to mark it. And I can just... We're just going to glue it together. So... How do we start? 
you have your two clamps accessible to you. You take your two pieces of wood, you put one at the bottom. What you want to do now is just get it as lined up as best as you can. So you may go from the top and the bottom, just knocking your pages in place. And then once you feel you have it done right now, if it's not perfectly straight, you're okay because we're still going to cut it. And this is why we cut the top, bottom, and the front edge after we glue it together. Because if we're not lined up perfectly, when we cut it, we will be. So that's an important little tip is we're just going to do the spine right now, which we can get a good spine simply by leaving it in our book press and letting gravity do its work. And then I'll take my lighter clamps to just kind of secure it. So that way I can check everything out, make sure everything is good. Double check, triple check, just make sure everything is good. And then once you've got it where you're happy, like you got your back, everything's nice and smooth and straight as best I can do. Like, like this is a makeshift book vice. So it's not perfect. And then what we need to do is we need to crank on the actual metal clamps. And the reason we're doing these metal clamps is we're going to be putting a lot of stress on this document as we glue it together and what we want to make sure we we don't do is slide the pages out of our book vise out of the vise that we've created i've tried before just using these cheaper spring clamps and when i start twisting my book back and forth the pages all shifted so that's when i started using it only took me one or two times before i'm like i just need to clamp it better Went out and got these little metal clamps and everything's fine. So what we need to do now is glue this all together. So get your Elmer's glue, open the top first. Um, make sure you have your, your Elmer's glue open and that it's breathing. So sometimes Elmer's glue will get clogged up and nothing worse than when you go to use it and you are got your book all spread out and ready for gluing and your glue cap, cap is clogged. So just make sure it's breathing and all you gotta do is get that gross little sound, get a little bit, get make sure you got your towel ready and then get your parchment paper ready. And the reason I like using these boxed ones is they're folded. So it's real easy to just put them over your book and, um, protect the, the pages with the glue and everything like that. Also, you're going to use these a lot in bookbinding uh, because these will absorb some of the moisture and you know, you're know you going to go through them quite often. So you might want to buy a box of them and just have them around for yourself. You can always try to, you know, if you have them in your kitchen, use the ones you have in your kitchen, but then when you want to cook cookies or bake cookies or anything, you won't have any. So you might want to buy a box just for bookbinding. So here you can see them pushing my document over this is I'm fanning the pages out and what we're going to do is we're going to put Elmer's glue on we're going to work it in and what this is doing is just giving me a little bit of the actual document to get glue on so that the pages stick together better I've seen a lot of videos where they just have the document up like this and they're just gluing on the surface well that glue is not really getting into the actual pages themselves so what you want to do is you want to fan it out like this so that you got a little bit of that edge to glue on and then just put your glue down. I do this with my fingers. Some people use paint brushes and stuff. I don't. I just use my fingers. I let it, you know, just that's just how I do it. But you want to put a lot down so that you can kind of get it all spread in there work it in kind of go back and forth you can go along the edge like this but also make sure you're going to side to side like this so you're really working that glue into the pages make sure everything gets good and covered you can wipe into it with a little bit of your damp cloth to get a little bit more moisture in there i can see spots that didn't get any glue it's okay to use glue 
you know, don't be afraid. This is all part of the process. And just make sure you get a good amount of glue in there and everything's worked in. And then guess what? We flip it around and we do the other side. Now look how messy that got. Now when I go on my clamp side, obviously my clamps get in the way. So I don't get as much of a fan. But that's okay. All we want to do is work it into the pages. And get glue on everything we possibly can. And then once we're done, we're just going to push it upright. Let me move my microphone out of my way. And this is where why you want those little pages on the front and the back. Because glue got all over the sides. It's all over my hands, even though I'm cleaning my hands as I go. But look, that's all glued now. We can wipe off some of that excess. I can feel how straight it is. It feels like an actual paperback. So we're good there. So now what we need to do is we want to protect this document um, and get it kind of in a press or in the book vise again. So you take your parchment paper. I'm just going to fold it in half. I'm going to set it on the top here. I'm going to take my other two pieces of wood. I'm going to just put them in as best I can. This doesn't need to be perfect. And then I just switch my clamps. I'm going to undo the metal clamps from down here. And we're going to go up here with them. And it's all just going to be pressed in. You could just put this in your book press if you wanted to. But, like, I don't have an actual book press. I have a very makeshift book press also. And this gives me more pressure to really crank on it to get, get it down good and tight. I have a couple extras of these. I could put more on if I wanted to but I don't need to. I've got these little side clamps and then these will just sit off and then this is my document. And now what I'll do is I'll just set this off to the side and I'll let it dry and I'll let it dry for 24 hours and then I'll come back to it uh, to cut in the document to put in the um, to put in the binding rope. So we'll go back into the pictures to wrap up this video. And then after everything is glued together, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this on my table and let it dry for 24 hours. You really want to make sure you let it dry for a good long time. That way that glue hardens up because the next step is going to be really getting rough with the document and cutting into it. And you don't want that glue to be soft. Um, so just let it dry for 24 hours. Also, once I've let it dry for the 24 hours, I'm going to put it back into my book press to get all the air out from in between the pages. As you can see, the pages are kind of fanned out and that's not good. So once you're done, once it's dried, you just put it back in your book press, let it sit in your book press for a little while just to get that air out before you start cutting the pages. But that will all be in the next video. So thank you for watching and have a great day.